In the vast expanse of the gaming cosmos, Starfield has descended, igniting a cosmic debate among critics. While some shower with praise, others find themselves adrift in a sea of uncertainty. Our journey today begins with a central question. Is Starfield a celestial triumph or a cosmic conundrum? An even scarier question is, what if it's both? Indeed, if you've been keeping an eye on the reviews, you'd think so. Leon Hurley from Games Radar lauds its immersive world building. IGN's Dan Stapleton grapples with its challenging start. Game Informer's Matt Miller revels in exploration and GameSpot's Michael Higman finds it somewhat lacking in innovation. Amidst these contrasting opinions, a question lingers. Will Starfield become your next gaming love affair? Or is Starfield doomed to leave you adrift in the cold void of space? Doomed, doomed, doomed. He's not just a space pirate. He's the reason aliens check their star charts twice. He once solved a Rubik's Cube blindfolded while doing a spacewalk. And yes, he still made it look easy. His space selfies have more followers than some galaxies have stars. Once, during an interstellar poker game, he bluffed a black hole into thinking it was just a mere speck of dust. His space beard defies the laws of physics. And when he logs in, NPCs gain sentience just to have a conversation with him. He is the most interesting man in space. I don't always venture to remote celestial realms, but when I do, I prefer the splendid company of none other than the Tuxedo Bandido. Because let's face it, space is a lot more interesting with him in it. Banditos, welcome back. I'm Tuxedo Bandito, and today we're delving into the vast expanse of the cosmos to take a close-up look at the highly anticipated game, Starfield. But we're not alone in this cosmic journey. With me, as always, is the suave and charming Juan Solo, the most interesting man in space. What's crackalackin'? Today we embark on a cosmic journey unveiling the mystery of what is Starfield. Do they have space pirates? I haven't even started, Juan. In the starlight expanse of Starfield, the story unfolds in the settled systems, a region of space teeming with human colonies. It's the year 2330, and advanced technology has birthed a thriving interstellar civilization. However, unity eludes humanity, and diverse factions dot the cosmic landscape. From mega corporations like the Starfield Xenofresh Corporation to ideologically opposed governments such as Starfield Freestar Collective and the Starfield United Colonies. Each faction harbors distinct ambitions and aspirations. So, are there space pirates or not? We'll get to that. Your journey begins as Joe Space Miner. From there, your adventure takes flight. While we won't give all the details, you'll encounter an alien artifact, a key player in the campaign's enigmatic plot. Upon contact, your character experiences cryptic visions, seeding a central mystery surrounding these enigmatic artifacts. Cryptic visions? Not usually a good sign. Indeed, these cryptic visions set the stage for unraveling the artifact's secrets. You'll also meet Barrett. Oh, she's a hottie. A scientist and explorer from the Starfield Constellation faction, which plays a pivotal role in investigating the artifacts. Your journey will take you to the edges of the unknown universe, to cities like New Atlantis, the red deserts of Mars, and the bustling streets of Sidonia City and Neon City, even barren, uninhabited space rocks. So, no space pirates? Not yet, Juan. The Constellation faction is poised to play a significant role in the narrative, as they already possess some artifacts. They're at the forefront of uncovering the central mystery, delving into anomalies, and deciphering the enigmatic eye. What the eye represents remains a tantalizing enigma, possibly another artifact fact, place, or entity holding the narrative together. While that remains to be seen, Starfield offers more than its central story. With over 250,000 lines of dialogue, your journey is bound to be substantial. Sexy green alien lady romances anyone? Hmm. Starfield promises a plethora of side missions, making exploration on over 1,000 planets a core aspect of the game. With numerous outposts on alien worlds, you'll uncover rewards ranging from credits to weapons and armor. The universe of Starfield is vast and there's so much more to explore. It's actually quite insane. Get to the pirate part already. It's clear you have a soft spot for alien pirates. There are the Crimson Fleet Pirates, and they offer some thrilling encounters akin to interstellar skirmishes. Interstellar skirmishes? Now we're talking? Indeed. Starfield promises an epic journey through the cosmos, filled with mysteries, factions, and yes, Juan, even alien pirates. Called it. You choose the path you walk. Be a smooth-talking space pirate, the illustrious hero, assassin, common thief, or 
Just a man lost in space. Space pirates or bust. As for the main story revolving around collecting those mysterious alien artifacts, if you're wondering about the length of the campaign, it's estimated to span 30 to 40 hours of interstellar adventure. If you're into lore, then you will be spoiled in riches. I'm not much for the theatrical. I'll just have to suck it up. But Starfield is not all glamorous. What I tell you, doomed. In the ever-evolving universe of Starfield, players are experiencing a common narrative arc. Many embark on their interstellar adventures only to find themselves initially overwhelmed and unprepared, maybe even bored. The game's intricate systems can feel cumbersome and some players may even bounce off it in frustration. Yeah, I'd be one of them. However, as they continue to explore its vast cosmos, as they delve deeper into the game, the complexities begin to make sense and a moment of revelation occurs. I remember my first beer. Players start to grasp the intricacies of the universe and their perception of the game shifts from disappointment to enchantment. See, I told you patience pays off. Yeah, this transformation has been vividly documented on the Starfield subreddit, where within a mere 48 hours, sentiments transition from this is disappointing to this could be my favorite game of all time. Reddit's quicker than the Kessel Run. In the ever-evolving cosmos of Starfield, the journey from frustration to fascination is a testament to the game's depth and potential. This is something we need to discuss further. Strap in, folks. It's going to be a wild ride. Look at this. Is it me or is the game getting better the more you play it? So many people whined about the game when it came out, but it's starting to really open up. This is something all those gamers waiting on the sidelines are curious about. Just jump in, you idiots. In fact, look at this post right here. The more time I spend playing this game, the more I revoke my earliest criticisms about space travel. <laughs> That's so funny. I can relate. Early on, I largely agreed with the reviewers about how the somewhat superficial aspect to the ship flying and space travel impacted gameplay. But now that I have played the game for a solid 15 hours, I 100% revoke my earlier criticisms about space travel. Pay attention because this is very key feedback. While it's true that initially the system as it does take some of the wow factor away, I actually prefer the convenience of just fast traveling from the surface of one planet to the surface of another planet and another star system, as opposed to having to take off for the 50th time, fly to another system, fly to another planet, land, sell, buy ammo, take off, and head back. I realized this when doing an outpost where I ran out of med packs and bullets. The fact that I could basically fast travel to a merchant in New Atlantis and fast travel back in 15 seconds was a good thing. It has completely changed my mind on this. Basically, because of the fact that this is much more of an RPG than a space sim, key statement there, there are going to be many times in the game when you must want to sell your shit restock and get back into the action and having to manually fly all the way back and forth would be super duper annoying and disruptive to the game flow. It was hard for me to see this without playing it for myself, but it was the right decision I now firmly believe. Banditos, this is a great counter post. The things he touched on were repeated over and over in countless early reviews and seemed to be glaring issues where Bethesda really missed a mark. You can never really trust those early reviews. And what he said is fair. You eventually realize in this vast universe, fast travel is a great enhancement, not a setback. This isn't a space simulator. It's an RPG. In fact, we have another testifier. The turn this sub has taken in the past 48 hours is massively satisfying. It turns out, as many discovered over the weekend, that Starfield is that rare gem of a game that just keeps getting better, richer, and more satisfying as time goes on. He continues to say, many of the issues that seemed glaring in the first several hours of the game either faded away or were revealed to be part of a bigger game world and play loop that was far more thoughtful and complex than was at first apparent. For me, Starfield just keeps getting better. I keep on discovering new things from massive systems down to tiny details. This is a gorgeous awe-inspiring experience that is far better at hour 35 than it was at hour 5. While Bethesda has already started addressing bugs and plans to improve the overall gaming experience, there's a huge opportunity to enhance the early transition phase. For now, if you're considering this game, do yourself a favor, play at least 6-10 to 10 hours before deciding if it's for you. That's because common feedback from basically everybody is saying that the game game starts off extremely slow and then opens up to something magnificent. That's a key detail. I got an idea. Just buff the game's takeoff. Starfield adventurers have voiced their concerns about certain aspects of the game that can make their early hours quite challenging. 
Juan Solo, are you ready for this? Hit me with it. First up, we have the age-old issues of encumbrance. It seems like carrying too much loot can be a real downer in the beginning. Even with a modest 100 kilograms carry upgrade, you can easily find yourself overburdened, especially with weapons and armor. How do you expect me to carry all my space booty? And if you're overloaded, you can't fast travel or even run very far. Carrying too much means you're using too much oxygen. While oxygen doubles as stamina in Starfield, it can be a real pain, especially when you're exploring a planet's surface. The baseline oxygen levels are considerably low for the level of their early exploration in the game. Breathing shouldn't be this hard. Well, there are upgrades, so at least eventually you won't be gasping for air as often. And speaking of upgrades, the requirements for the oxygen perks can be quite intensive. Seriously, stick to the basics. Stick to the basics. He was such a good coach. Now let's talk ships. My ship smells of rich mahogany because I'm important. Ship combat can be a tough nut to crack, primarily because your first ship, the Frontier, is pretty lackluster. Like showing up to an interstellar dogfight with a paper plane. Right. The Frontier is pretty basic and lacks in baseline damage, shields, and cargo capabilities. What is this? Amateur hour. And upgrading your ship is a fundamental part of being successful in this game. The activity itself is quite rewarding and expensive. But this is a game within the game as you look forward to matching the big leagues with a monstrous fleet. A ship that won't fall apart is a good start. That's true. Navigating the cities in Starfield can be a real headache. The in-game maps are basically not there. They're very rudimentary and more like a compass than anything else. Running in circles is pretty easy to do, especially in large cities like New Atlantis or Neon. It's easy to get lost. Lost in a city? Not on my watch. More detailed city maps could help players find their way around, locate vendors, and generally avoid losing their way for half an hour. And time is unity. Starfield could also use more tutorials and explanations. Many game systems are barely explained or not explained at all. It's like trying to assemble a starship with a single page manual. Fun fact, I can do that. Speaking of time, remember the inventory issues mentioned earlier? That never really goes away, even as you progress your capabilities in that department. It's not unusual to spend up to 30% of your time trying to manage your inventory. Visualizing what you have, moving inventory, comparing, all rather cumbersome, and a comprehensive view is very much needed. Hold much? The menus don't really help in this area either. Menus in Starfield are quite clunky and cumbersome. Typical Bethesda. If you're not familiar with some of their earlier titles that have suffered from the same complaints, then this will likely be more of an obstacle for you at first. You do get the hang of it. Eventually. And the game's enchantment will likely earn your forgiveness on the matter. Spoken like a true Bethesda fanboy. This is actually the first Bethesda title I'm covering. Fanboy. The game needs comprehensive tutorials and guides, not just tiny pop-up windows with fleeting explanations. Shipbuilding, base building, cargo storage, these basics deserve some proper instruction. After all, we don't want folks giving up after a mere handful of hours when the game truly starts to shine. Explaining the unexplained, I like it. You still haven't told us if you like it. Like what? Starfield Genius, do you like it? Isn't it obvious? Uh, no. Okay, well, truthfully, I almost passed out in boredom within the first three hours of the game, and I had thoughts of regret. But right about six hours in, things really opened up, and just how amazing this game is and is going to be really did dawn at me. I felt like I personally touched that alien artifact and was taken on a journey across the Starfield galaxy to see the past and future all at the same time. The character customization, skill tree complexity, and possibility to really develop a unique experience is absolutely a game changer. The combat is amazing, but it doesn't feel like that at first. After a few hours of gameplay and you level up your character, it really begins to shine and there's plenty of action. Even space dogfighting, shipbuilding, crafting, manufacturing, and building outposts have unlimited capabilities. This game is absolutely a winner in my book and offers years of entertainment and a legacy of games to come. <laughs> in fact, I'm already experiencing this game in my dreams and that's pretty cool when an RPG can do that. Told ya. Told me what? Fanboy. Currently, I'm on a journey of developing my character to be a Han Solo Pablo Escobar stealth ninja sniper space assassin. Sounds like my Tuesday night. And the content I have coming your way will be a shiny guiding star on the fastest way to farm XP, to be a millionaire quick and build manufacturing outposts that generate massive amounts of passive income so you can buy the heavens and earth if you like. And I'll teach you everything you need to know about ship crafting. I rather steal. Right, and I have a comprehensive guide to all the essential skills you need to not just be any old space pirate, but the most notorious and revered of all space pirates. 
a little help can go a long way in the cosmos. All right, thank you for hanging out with me today. My name is Tuxedo Bandito, and that's Juan Solo, and this was another episode of Starfield. If you found this video helpful, subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss out on the fantastic experiences waiting for you in Starfield. If you have anything you want to see covered, be sure to let me know in the comments. And thank you to all the channel members and donors who make everything possible. This starship couldn't fly without you.